This is Larry the Barber Man and today I'm at the IBS with a very special young lady called Sophie. Her Instagram name is staygold31. As of last night she won best female barber at Barbercon which as you all know is Barbershop Connects uh, annual barbering event or conference and today I'm going to give uh, Sophie an interview to find out a little bit about her life and where she's going and what she's going to do with her new voice as best female barber by Barbercon. So Sophie, welcome. Thank you very much for taking the Thank time you out of your me. day to do this interview with me. I just want to basically find out how you got into barbering. As I understand it, you was a hairdresser. You was dissatisfied with being a hairdresser, so you transitioned into being a barber. Tell me a bit a bit about your life as a hairdresser and why you felt the need to transition to become a female barber. Right, so I started hair about seven years ago. The first year I got into cosmetology and you know, going through that first year was a little bit tough because I couldn't find that feeling where you're just excited to wake up every day, go to work and have a good time realistically. So the second year I'm like, okay, before I, before I give it all up, because I was just trying different things to see what kind of creative outlet that I could find. And I, I was like, okay, let me try men's hair and see how that works. You know, I jumped into a barber shop. It was probably one of the most uncomfortable, intimidating moves I've done working by myself as a female in a shop full of all guys with way more experience than I had. So after working with that, it developed into a pretty quick passion where it was challenging, it was fast paced, and it, it made me want to go to work because I'm like, okay, this is kind of hard. I need to go and, and just keep going. And my main focus was just to do what I can and, and, and try to make it work because it was fun. I enjoyed it. So tell me, did, did you have any idea yesterday that you was going to win this award or was it a complete and utter surprise? No, no idea. It was a complete surprise. Um, I was going just to showcase. Um, I ran into Lee right at the end and he's like, hey, do you mind just waiting over here for a second? And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I'm standing next to Patty Cuts and me and him are just like, what are we, what are we doing up here? Like, we don't know. And then he goes through the awards, he gives the first two, Patty gets one, uh, Major League Barbershop gets one, and then the third one, they were like, yo, this is, the, this is the easiest one for us to give. It's the best female barber award and we want to bring out Sophie. And, you know, I, I was completely speechless. For all the people that were there, it was a completely vulnerable moment for me to kind of be recognized after all these years of, of knowing how hard it is to, first of all, be a, a barber, but then to also be a female, which made it, you know, extremely difficult in the beginning. Okay, excellent, great stuff. And why, in your humble opinion, why do you think they, 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 they chose you apart from your hard work and your dedication? I think for me, I've been, I feel like I've been, I, I, I put out there a lot that, you know, it's very real, like I don't, I don't sugarcoat anything that it's very hard and anything that's happened I express over the web as well to kind of remind people like, yo, like we all started in the same place, we've all had these type of struggles. You know, and being able to connect with other people that have gone through the same thing, I just felt like I was the voice for a lot of people because if they felt like they couldn't do it, they could come to my page and find inspiration and keep and keep having more, you know, energy to kind of push forward in that sense. Okay, so you'd basically say it was because a you're a lady and you look like a vulnerable, you you make yourself vulnerable, you help people, and you do by all of me by all accounts bang out really good haircuts. Yes, that is the plus side because you have to. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's always it was always the underdog. We are the the minority of this entire industry and just the barbering world alone. So we got to come twice as hard, and that's what also I think has helped me kind of separate myself from everyone else because in the beginning it was kind of a, it was definitely an advantage because there wasn't a lot of girls and now I'm seeing that growth in a lot of states where you know women are not being afraid anymore and they're coming into this world and and trying to like hold their own and it's it's great to see the industry kind of change now where people aren't going to say like oh you're just good for a girl like you're actually a good barber period and that's what it should be it shouldn't be segregated to be like oh you're okay for a chick 
but it was those little things that have pushed me to where it is now. You know, I'm like, okay, what I, what I gotta do to be a just good barber, right? Like, so those were the little things that it helped me. And then I, I hope, and I talk to people all the time that I, that you gotta use those little moments because we all have a specific one based on where we live or what shops we work at to kind of find those moments and kind of drive you even harder. Okay, that sounds good to me. So not only do you kind of step up in the plate what needs to be done in your own skill set, you also step up to the plate in your how-to videos. You've actually got your own YouTube channel where just like myself, Larry the Barber Man, you teach them how to uh, get the best out of their tools, how to do different haircuts. In your own words, tell me about your YouTube channel and your how-to endeavors. I think it's important to show people that, you know, you're not just taking shortcuts and just making it look nice, right? So I represent Babyliss for barbers, of course, and, you know, it's important for me to show that I'm using these tools to kind of do things. So there's not a lot of, like, you know, people think there's color enhancements and stuff like that. Like, you can see how it transitions, and I think that's important because people want to feel like it's real and attainable versus saying, like, oh, I could never do that. You know, I want to break it down easy because I know what it was like when I started to, to just be given a pair of clippers, not knowing the specs or what is out there. You know, I break down tool knowledge because I think it's important for us to understand why we're using it so we can do it better versus going in there and you're just kind of like, okay, I don't even know where to begin, you know? I think it's important. And what is the name of your YouTube channel for other ladies and men out there that feel that they're lacking in certain areas and they want to start, you know, tuning most, into your... Most of my videos are on on my Instagram. Okay. You'll find most of them there. I have a couple on YouTube, but they're, uh, they're not updated. Okay. And uh, as we do know, your uh, Instagram channel is staygold31. Okay. And your got an education gig, you're an ambassador for a, a very big company, Babilis. This is going to be a huge inspiration for many men and women. Tell us how you got this gig with uh, Babilis. So this kind of happened over a little bit over a year and a half ago. Um, you know, with a lot of companies now, especially in the barbering industry, they're looking for people that can already sell themselves, you know what I mean? So. The first, first five, four and a half years, I've just built my page off of things that I enjoyed. You know, I found, you have to find what's peer to you, and then from there, that's how you're gonna attract an audience. Because people wanna, wanna follow real people that have real life experience that they can connect with. And over time, that has helped me kind of build my page to what it is. And with the with Babyliss, they're looking for people that already can sell themselves. So then they could say, hey, we can work with you too and put some clippers in your hands. And that's kind of how it happened. And you know, I took a risk. To be honest, everybody was skeptical of our company at first. I was skeptical because I didn't know anybody that used them. You know what I mean? And I gave it a chance, I took a risk, and it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Yeah, no, that's right, because there is a kind of bad stigma attached well, there was a bad stigma so attached to Babylis and barbering because a lot of people said that they weren't aggressive enough to be a barbering tool. But obviously, with the what is that big silver clipper called? The 880, the seven, the FX 880. FX, yeah. I mean, so many barbers in the UK now have switched over to that and 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 are saying that it's a credible tool for the business. So, yeah, how you're 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 dead right there. And at Babilis, what do you do? It's just the educational, the same kind of thing that you do on video, you do on stage? Yes, we, uh, we go over products, you know, the same thing we do. We all kind of, our whole team is a variety of different uh, skill sets. So as a whole, we kind of offer almost everything around the whole industry. And, you know, we just share, we share what works for us. And usually people can connect to that because we're not salesmen at the end of the day. We're barbers, we're hairstylists. We want stuff that works for us. So we're not gonna share anything that doesn't help our business grow, you know? So we try to share tips. Uh, Rob, I know, shares like social media. We all try to share different things because if we all grow together, everybody grows, you know what I mean? So it's gotta be, it can't be just a little bit here and a little bit there. It's like, if we want the industry to change, we want these barbering standards to change because in the beginning, 
barbering was looked at as like as if you worked at McDonald's, like, oh, you're just a barber? And I used to remember feeling that way. I felt embarrassed. <laughs> and now I can say I'm a barber. And people are like, wow, like, really? Like, that's pretty cool. And now people are understanding that there's there's so many levels now. The, the, the industry has changed so much even in the last three years. So it's just like people are starting to appreciate the art and it's, and it's bringing brought to light in a, in a higher end sense now where now people can see like it's not just a little hole in the wall, like there's levels now and there's, there's a lot to accomplish. Okay, so you're a brand ambassador for somebody else's brand. You've actually got a range of pins yourself. Tell me a little bit about your pins and where people can buy in to yourself and your pins. Um, right now, you can find a link on my uh, Instagram that will link to that little store page. I just have these like little signature stay gold pins that you could just kind of put on barber aprons. I know everybody likes pins, so I made some little gold ones. Um, so you can find it there. I'm working on my website. It has some really cool features um, that I'm really excited to announce, but it, probably another another month or so, I'll, I'll release all that. Okay, so what, watch the space with the pins and what what's coming with Sophie and stay gold. Okay, um, and what are you loving about the industry right now? What's really at the forefront of your mind that gives, puts a smile on your face when you wake up in the morning? Just the wave of how much men's hair has grown. Because, you know, a little bit ago, guys were, they weren't into their hair as much. And I feel like that stigma for like guys trying to get their eyebrows done, it, it's gone now. You know, like if they want to get all that extra pampering done, they want to get a facial, they want to do this, like, it's it's more acceptable. Where it's it's not like the old days where people are like, oh, you know, guys would just, I, I'll cut my hair when I feel like it. Now it's like, they want to, they want to look better, they want to feel better. And, you know, it's changing the industry for the men's side, for the men's grooming side, that it's matching up even with the women's side now. Because before you could say, there's more money in women's hair. But now, men are getting their hair cut, you know, four, three times, the amount of times until the woman comes back for that haircut. So price-wise, it's starting to add up to be the same thing, you know what I mean? And, I, and it's great to see those, this kind of level up to where everything else is at. Okay. I'm starting to get the feeling that you like everything to be kept really real and you like people to, I don't know, expose their vulnerabilities and work with them. Um, just lastly, you, you show a really keen interest in photography. Tell me how you got into photography and who taught you in You know, it came with uh, cutting hair. Um, I used the Max out of using a, uh, an iPhone to take pictures that I needed something that was higher quality. And with higher quality photos and videos, you can actually study your work a little bit more because you can see the details that your eyes don't always see. So that was definitely how I got into it. And, and once you have that, you have different camera settings and that leads to discovering new things that you can do and just overall create a better portfolio for yourself and I think that's really important as well as your presentation you know you could be a good barber but if you don't have presentation like how is that gonna how's that gonna attract clientele business opportunities you know it, it kind of develops as you go and this is not something I ever learned from day one it's just as it goes it starts to make sense because you you have to do trial and error and see what works and what doesn't work and over time you'll realize like wow this better high quality picture is gonna look better than that iPhone picture that you use and it, it makes the biggest difference and people will notice those little details you know it it separates it separates pages apart because of the quality that you that you invest in yourself okay you know? that makes sense sophie thank you very much for giving me your time we've just had to shut cut this interview short because she needs to get on stage at the ibs so i wish you well and you know thank you carry so on smashing it thank you so much you're very welcome